Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another episode of Bruin Build. Today, we are back here in our steampunk city. I gotta say, I have some great ideas for the OctaCore. We're not gonna be working on that today. I wanted to uh, do a couple things today. Um, we're gonna go over some quick texture changes um, as I look for a place to build our first house here in our steampunk city and uh, it's gonna be interesting because i'm debating on if i want to build it here where all my stuff is or if i want to go like over here in this little quadrant and build over here i'm not really sure uh, we may just go over here because this is where we're at currently i think that might make the most sense so i'll figure out in uh, due time what is going to go over here and how we're going to lay it out um but I want to go over some textures with you. I guess first I should show you, I have been expanding this just a bit. Um, didn't figure this needed to be kind of shown. Uh, it's just another building. Um, it's going to extend a little bit up. It's got the roof basically is what's left. And this is gonna be a birch wood shop. Um, and this is where we're gonna just store birch wood. And so uh, I have a plan to just kind of uh, maybe once a week or something go and gather up materials um, to be able to stock these and have a really big supply um, since we can't really. We could make an automatic farm, I suppose. We may make an automatic farm, uh, wood farm in, uh, at some point in our lives, but I'm not really sure how to do that and I don't want to do that right now but anyways let's jump into the creative world while I search over here for a place to build I want to show you some textures because uh, I have been basically perfecting the textures uh, that we have so far all right we are here and this is a new flat world that I have made uh, specifically for texture packs uh, texture pack work and uh, it's just to be able to compare and con contrast and eventually the goal is once I get it done I can just kind of take a nice little gander down this way and kind of just go over every single little thing um, and it's all laid out and ready to go so first things first I've been adding variants to the cobblestone um, you'll notice there is no different type of cobblestone texture with like different stones um, I've just worked on adding some variation in the stone so there's these lighter ones there's a couple brown ones that are these are the least likely to occur uh, we've got some darker flex in there just to add a little bit of tone variation um, and then the regular one that is just plain moss i'm going to be probably doing the same thing it's a little more interesting probably only going to make like two or three variations of this uh not to go too crazy also the stairs are in fact uh also will have variations so that it all ties together well stone and all this stuff haven't done anything gonna do something similar to what b-dubs has done with his uh, stone bricks i think it's pretty cool adding in some different light values to the stone bricks instead of changing what they look like um, and i think that's a good idea now comes the bigger bigger changes so regular old diorite i have changed to this flagstone as you may have if you saw last episode um, but one thing that uh, it did show was lines going all the way down and i've kind of eliminated that by adding in variation to the similar to the cobblestone there are all these different types. Uh, there's, I think, six or four. I can't remember. Um, there are four, four to six types of diorite texture that will show up. Um, and it's just varying lights and darks just to make everything blend a bit better. Sometimes you get random bits like that, but that's, I mean, that's perfectly fine. This is probably my absolute favorite. This is polished diorite. I think it looks like a fantastic marble almost and it's pretty awesome to build with that's what we're going to be building with today in the steampunk city is this and this because i really wanted to use it and it looks pretty dang good with orange so been uh, d working with this a bit i really like it i think it's pretty cool it's also got a little bit of a yellow tone to it to match the dirtier diorite but it is a bit more refined, so it is a little cleaner looking. Now comes andesite. I have done not a ton of work to this, but a ton of work to the polished. So what this, the issue with this one is that 
when it, there's no variation, it can be excessively busy because it's just all these little stones that appear. And so what I've done is I've tried to make it so that there are highlights of stones and then some kind of fade into a muddier background where you can't really see, like you get the impression of stone, but it's not too busy on your eyeballs. Um, so there's a lot of variation in here. I'm even gonna add two more, I think, um, to add a little bit of dark spots in the upper corner. Um, since this one's like smack in the middle, I think there needs to be like a dark spot here and a dark spot here so that there's a little bit of variation. Um, so there'll be a few more of this. We're gonna build with this as well. And then the polished actually is, um, basically what I did was I, I took it and I need to, get rid of this line right here. But other than that, um, I basically just took it and made it so that I used a blur tool and just blurred what I had so that it got rid of a lot of the noise. Um, and so I did a soft blur over it so that it still has that crisp polish feel, but it's a little bit smoother, um, similar to what this feels like. But um, I think this looks really cool also. Uh, we're gonna be building with this as well. Um, only wood texture I have changed is the spruce. It's pretty obvious as well. It's got all the variations and stuff. We're gonna be doing this to every single one of these um, to varying uh, degrees, I suppose. This one will probably have the uh, least dramatic change because we kind of need it to be consistent um, to look a bit more like plating or metal or whatever. Um, but it's still going to feel pretty similar to this. So it's a little dirtier, a little grungier. Um, I was going to be changing the sand. I may change the color of it, but not too much. Not with the Now that I have a, a build, we're going to be using this. Um, I've got a new build style that I want to experiment with today. Um, and that's going to be at the end of the episode. So if you uh, like... Uh, long distances and, and uh, some crazy tropical building that is by far the strangest build that I've, I've done, um, then stick around to the end because it's uh, it's going to be interesting. But those are the texture changes. Hope you guys like it. Uh, also probably going to get rid of uh, all the bricks and stuff in this right now. I'm just going to go back to this because this is not no, this is not good. Uh, and I'm not going to release any of these until I have a decent um, pack in order because all of these I want to start editing and I want to be able to add a good amount too. So that is kind of the plan. Now let's jump back into our uh, real world and we're going to take a gander at some building. Hopefully I'll have some stuff set up for you. All right, so I've done some planning. I've done a little bit of reorganization down here. I think I have a, a change of heart of how I want to uh, lay this city out. So this is going to have houses all along it because it's pl pretty plain and pretty boring. So we're going to have another couple shops here. This is going to be the starting of a house. This is going to be a final shop. Not sure what it's going to sell. Um, so this will be a shop this building right here and then these the red markers are where the end of the walkway goes so it's only going to be about a two to three wide uh, walkway of probably just wood attached to the uh, building block um, and so we're going to have walkways that go along here along the sides of the house along here because this is the probably most structured portion of it considering how uh, massive this is this is probably going to all just be a part of this giant chunk. Um, and so we're going to have houses that are start in. So this will be a house. This, there's going to be probably a door here. There's going to be a door here. And then so on and so forth. Uh, but I don't want this blue concrete on me. So we're going to just have houses that go along here. And I've already kind of laid out where they're going to be. Um, they're not going to be totally big or anything. Probably not going to even extend taller than this. Maybe a couple towers that will, but not too much. I want this giant structure to feel incorporated into the city is why we're doing this. It also felt weird to have a giant walkway here. I wouldn't know how to decorate this. So instead of de decorating it, we're going to cover it up. Um, but this, can I please get over this? Um, but this also uh, gets rid of um, kind of the plan we had going here. So all this blue concrete is kind of Worry, waste, blah, blah, blah. worthless Jiminy. It took me forever to get that word out. Um, 
And uh, so this outside area, outside of this octocore, is going to be pretty free form and pretty uh, just lay them out and then we'll connect them up. I think that is almost a better way because all of these are going to have um, giant, if you're new and you haven't actually seen this, uh, this is what we're going to be having underneath all of that giant windmilly uh, stuff. And then there's going to be counterweights and stuff because these houses are not going to be symmetrical. So we're going to have to put counterweights in the houses, in the base, um, that actually are, are, are going to counterweight, um, how people traverse and stuff. And I'm experimenting with the thought of having different elevations. And so these houses are going to be higher up and then they're going to make their way down. Um, and we're going to have different, um, I don't know, how, different elevations to the city. This will be the sort of cloud district that is up here all the way. Like this entire area here is going to be cloud district. And then the next one is going to be down at this level. There's going to be, they're going to be scattered out more. And I'm thinking that the walkways are going to be, uh, I don't know, I can't say. Um, not really sure. But anyways, this is what we're working on today. We are building, oh, looks like I forgot one guy right here. We're building up a house, and this is how small the uh, lower portion is. It gets a bit bigger as it goes up, um, but this is what the house is going to start off with. And uh, so let me go ahead and build that up. We're going to go up probably ooh, 10 blocks or so, um, and then uh, let me lay out the lower portion, get that all built up, because I want this to be a pretty quick and easy build. So not much building on camera, just a lot of um, back and forth. Plus the sun's going down, so I can't record anyway. So I'll see you guys in a few when I have this lower portion done. All right, as you can see, the bottom is basically done uh, the only thing I have to add are windows on all four sides other than that it is done um, uh, except for the door I suppose so this is what it's gonna look like we've got this central pillar here and then it's gonna come out on these two ends and then it's not actually going let's clean that up it's not actually gonna go out on this end or the back end um, it's gonna go just straight up and then we've got a spiral staircase so this trapdoor here is going to lead to the mechanism I figured every house is gonna have to have a mechanism uh, that or like an access to the uh, flying machine that's underneath them uh, so the little windmill thing they're gonna need uh, mechanical access and so you come up here and that's why I didn't do the windows because I kind of wanted to plan out like there's probably going to be a window here and there's going to be a window here and then a window here. So I wanted to plan those out. Um, and then this is how big the interior is going to be. There's going to be another, the spiral staircase is going to continue going all the way up here. Um, or I'm going to shove it over and make it actually, actually this is going to have wall all along here. Um, so we're not actually going to have nearly as much space as we, as it looks. Um, and this is not what the floor is going to be. It, it, that would look fine. Um, but it's not what the floor is going to be. So this is what, let's see, do we have any regular? No, I didn't grab any regular old andesite. I wanted to try using both. So we're going to use both of them. Uh, primarily the polished because I think it looks the best. It's almost like a Tudor style, not quite. Um, so we're gonna have this little outcropping be this type of um, uh, diorite, sorry. Um, and so this is gonna build up for a little bit uh, and we're gonna probably mix them here uh, where they connect so that it flows a little bit more easily. And so this is going to extend up and uh, it's going to go up quite a ways. And then we're going to have in uh, like a little turret almost that goes even further up to make for a, uh, I guess, technically a third story. Um, I think that'll be make for a nice little shaped building. Um, so let me go ahead and build up this floor and then we'll tackle the roof. I'm not sure we may do the interior. I have an idea of what to do on the interior, but I, I really don't have any idea actually. So who knows? I, I honestly don't know. 
So let me go ahead and build this up and I'll be back. All right, so I actually haven't been able to really get much in the ways of recording in uh, recently. Um, may, I had a, meet, a couple meetings and stuff, and so I'm doing this during my lunch break because I am working from home. So I've done some detail work on everything so far, even built up some of the roof. I know where I was going to build that. I've got a little portion to build with you. Um, and then other than that, it should be pretty much wrapped up. So it's gonna look pretty good. Actually, let's go ahead and build first, and then we'll do the detail, and then you can see what it, the uh, final, final product looks like. It's pretty cool. I really, really like how this is turning out. Okay, we need to go here, and we need, it's really simple. It's really just the roof, so it goes stair, block, stair, and then we put, not a block, a stair here, a stair here, and then I usually put a block here. You don't have to. You can put a stair. It looks fine either way. And then you go up by two blocks this time, and then a stair. So it's going up just a bit by bit. And so it's just a little bit higher and higher. It makes it for a little bit higher peaked roof. And you can see I've already done that on all four sides. And so now the roof is complete, or roof as some of you would like to say um, and this also because there would only be one block here of the regular um, andesite I decided to go with the uh, polished andesite and so it goes if you're going diagonally it goes one two which would be the second one will be right there and then three which is one two and then the stair that is the third so it goes one two three and goes up and that's how you get a nice uh sort of a sharp roof in a small tight space all right i am going through now and adding in some of the birch materials that we have because um it's a good tie in to this area so you see we have the birch uh, various different like studs and whatever uh, buttons and stuff sticking out of each log. And so we're going to do that and tie it in with the fences as well. So we're putting, I've put this here so we can have some fences dangled down. Um, and then each log will have a little button. And that's not how I want to go up. So we're going to have buttons on each. And then this should be the last bit of stuff that we have to do. This is what we're working with. This is going to be the upper district housing. And I think it looks really, really cool. It is this style just brought down a bit and minuscule. And what's nice is the thing that I like about this is that we can make smaller versions. We don't have to have this upper portion right here. We could make just a, a two-story thing and then make it maybe even come out on three sides. So it makes it a little bit bigger. It is quite tight on the inside. It is uh, not a big, big building. Um, as you saw on the inside, this is, uh, I put some lights in here. And so the inside is not big whatsoever. The uh, floor, I actually want to come up. Let's see here. I think I want it to come up to here so you can actually see out the windows. And uh, so we'll have some stairs probably right here. And then this staircase actually will begin again, I think, right here and continue going up all the way up. There will be a little loft up there. Um, I'll show you the interior either at the end of this episode or next episode. But now I want to go many, 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 many blocks away. And I want to start in on a new build because I want to start, oh, I missed one button. I want to start in on another village. I want to kind of alternate between here and this other village. I think it's going to be a good way for us to stay, like, I guess, involved and happy with building because I'll be honest, doing builds like these, doing uh, a lots and lots and lots of these giant ones really drains you. There's also a crap ton of chickens. They just keep coming. I keep I keep getting there. See, that looks so good. Look at that. Ooh, that is good. I like it. Um they yeah, they just keep swanning. See, look, and I have to I have to throw this egg. You just 
I have to. So many chickens. Um, but we're going to be doing this side project because it's exceptionally different from this style. It's much smaller, much uh, rounder, I guess. <laughs> And uh, it's much, much smaller is the main thing. It's also very different. It's not in the sky. Um, it's going to actually be in a jungle. Um, so this is going to be, so this, let's go back to this. This is what we're going to be doing for the next bit. I'm going to probably pop up a few more um, houses in this style, try and come up with some variations, and then maybe we'll just start trying to lay out the neighborhood. Because what I what I'm wanting to do is, build this main strip and then get these districts kind of this district kind of worked out with the houses um and then i'll be chipping away at this because we still have two to three sides i can't remember i think we have three full sides to do and that is a lot of work yeah we have that side that side and that side so we have a lot of work to do on the octacore as well, but I have a very cool idea. I'm not going to go into it quite yet, but I'm going to be chipping away at this, adding in this wall portion here so that each and each one has a wall and has windows and stuff and is closed off. Um, but I've said enough um, as is. Let's go on over to our new area to start on a quick new project that is gonna be, I may just show you. I think I'm just gonna build it up and then show you. So I'll see you over there. All right, we are here in our new biome. We are very far away and uh, that's why we're doing the project we're doing today. Uh, to wrap things up, I wanna introduce a new concept that is gonna be in our world and it's gonna be pretty fantastic I think it's gonna be such a lifesaver but I've got some parameters so we are currently at X level negative 10,920 and then 5,000 along the Z axis 5,600 we're very far away from everything um, and the reason we're here is because of the jungle. We are in the jungle, and I found the perfect spot for us to build. I'll show you that right at the very end of uh, where we're going to actually be. I have to remember how to get there, but I think I remember. reason we're here, I've been doing a little building. We are here in the midst of the jungle, and uh, we're building this thing right here. And this is actually going to be the build palette of what our normal builds are. This is going to be a little different, though, because today what we're going to build is a Colus Gate. If you've ever played Fable, uh, you'll know what a Colus Gate is. That is a teleportation means of travel. And uh, this is how we're going to get around our world. Um, and it's going to be... There's some parameters, so I'll get into those in a second. But reason for this is because this place, this all our jungles are crazy far away. Um, they are minimum of 8,000 blocks away. And uh, yeah, that was one of the main reasons I wanted to build out here in the jungle for this concept. Um, and this was the best option uh, i did a lot of flying around i looked at world maps and stuff to find jungles for one because um, this is the second closest and it's ten thousand blocks away from everything uh more well more than ten thousand when you take both axes into account and um so this is going to be our colus gate and uh, i'm going to build this off camera and show you because i don't want the episode to go crazy long um, but basically, the parameters are that the Cullis Gate is going to, uh, will, it'll teleport us to a hub, which is going to be in our steampunk city, I think. We'll have sort of a floating island um, that is not like chained or something to the city itself. And it is, or it's not even going to be a part of the city, it's just going to be near it, um, so that that can be kind of a, a big hub area for everything. Um, since it'll be our storage and stuff as well. So the hub is going to take us to basically a mage's guild, essentially. Um, in Fable, it would be the hero's guild. Um, and then we'll have access to all the different areas. We're going to build a Colus Gate at every single location. 
um, minus, mm, minus maybe Sarthal or the Gypsy Camp. Can't tell which one, or we'll do both. I don't know. It could be more fun to do both. Um, but the reason we're introducing this is because I'm I'm kind of tired of flying around and not experiencing the world. That is why I'm wearing armor today. I want to uh, actually experience Minecraft again the way it was originally. So this is uh, what we're going to be doing. We're going to be building these, and some of you may be thinking, you know, teleportation doesn't make you experience Minecraft at all. It makes you be able to teleport and not have to travel. It's even better than Elytra. But the parameters I'm setting is that every Colas gate has to be a minimum of 200 blocks away um, in two different directions from a town. Now, we may make some exceptions um, for bigger towns, um, but this being such a remote place, uh, I want to build a path that we have to follow that direction to where our actual new area is going to be. Um, so I, I basically am f making this a means of traveling long distances, but we still have to travel by foot and we still have to make pathways to experience the world. Um, it's just sort of shrinking the distance quite a bit so that we can still get around in a, a uh, actual like logical way. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get building and uh, I'm gonna maybe update you or I'm going to just build it and show you. And then uh, I want to set up the command with you. It's gonna be pretty easy. And then I'm going to uh, basically wrap it up there. So stick around for just a little bit longer and uh, I'll show you over there as well. I think it's gonna be quite fun. So let me get the building and I'll be back. All right, guys. What I have in my hand is a new beginning for us. Well, kind of, sort of. We still are going to have to walk quite a bit, but it's going to make this so much better. So if you didn't know command blocks, you have to be in creative mode. So we are in creative mode. And you also have to, well, you have to be in creative mode to actually like get it. And you can only get it through a command and you have to, you, you can only use it in creative. So this is gonna be totally in creative. And this is what we have. It's nice because we're in creative so I can kind of show you from all these angles. If you've played Fable, this may look a bit similar to what the Colos Gate normally would look like. I have also, I have taken liberties with it. It is much bigger than a lot of Colos Gates in Fable, but nonetheless, it is quite Cool, I think I think it's gonna look really cool um, I'm gonna build like a little camp here and then there's gonna be a path that goes down this way and then we'll build a little water like area here cliffside decorated a bit um, I'll do all this probably off camera um, the town is that way if I remember correctly um, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna go right here and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna type teleport at P. And then we're gonna put in our coordinates, which I have on the other screen. Now we'll click enter. That should be all set. We'll place this block down here and boom. And the button is how we will activate it. So that is what the finished product looks like. I did make um, an error uh, I, in doing this, I was testing it to make sure this worked. Now I have not tested at P. I accidentally did at E, totally spaced it, teleported every single entity in our world <laughs> to this very spot. And um, it was it was a mess. I've been cleaning up a mess for a little bit now. I got, sadly, porkers died in the process. Um, so we're going to have to get a replacement porkers. And it's, that's quite sad. He, he has died. Um, we also lost... Actually, we didn't lose anybody else. That's the only person that, that died. Um, it was It's sad. But I got our llamas back. Uh, our llamas in the swamp, I got them back where they're supposed to be. So that's good. So let's go ahead and test this out. Should push it, and it'll teleport us right here. Now this one I have here, see, at... E. No, 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 no. 
at P. And then this one, actually, I need to update the coordinates and we should make sure this is E. Yes. Okay, good. So we should teleport back right to here. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we are here 10,000 blocks away. What is that? What are you? Oh, that's just a gap. So this is how we're going to get around. Um, and I've decided to you put this here because this is still kind of close to this is close to our steampunk city, which is right over there. Um, so this island is not necessarily going to be where the hub is. That's just kind of where I have put that for now so that we can be somewhere relatively close. We're going to be working here and in that air new area. So as you can see, it's, pr it's pretty dang close. Um, I was going to put it up here, but then the, uh, the, I don't want actually the floating island to be where like the, like mages and stuff are going to be. I don't want them to be in the steampunk city. So we're going to probably build that off over here, um, somewhere. I'm not really sure, but I put this here for now. We'll move it eventually because we're going to have to have a hub that has multiples as we build out Colas gates. Um, but that is what it is now. I am very, very happy with it. I really like it. Um, I may change that button out for a pressure plate just so that you can, well, actually here, we'll just give it a test. I want to see what this is like. Um, you should just be able to walk. Yeah. You just walk right on it. And then this one you'll push but I have it so it teleports you here. So I just wanted to, I wanna make it as simple and seamless as possible to make it also feel kind of magical um, as well. So that is what we've got going. Um, let me fly on over. Let's go into spectator just to show uh, really quickly. I believe right over here. All right, I found it. I got a little lost. Um, so as you can see, this is, let's bump the render distance up just a tiny bit. All right, so you can see the distance we have to go. So if we go into creative so I can have a cursor, there is our spawning area where we will teleport in our Colas gate. We will have to traverse this area all the way over to here. So we are still going to have to go quite a distance, traverse a lot of land, and I will probably make it follow the river so it leads almost naturally to this area. Um, so it's a, as natural as possible. So it's a good distance, but it's not too crazy. It's not too much. Um, it's only, it's like 200, blo 200 blocks this way, 200 blocks this way. So it's not that far. Um, and I think it's going to be good. So I think that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have liked uh, everything. Let me know what your thoughts are about the uh, new teleportation Colas Gate idea. I think it's pretty cool. Um, but definitely leave a comment about that. Leave a like if you liked the video, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode.